Okay, this will be a really quick video showing you how to use the ZD Administration Console to create a service that'll let you RDP from your computer to some other computer. And we're going to do this very simply, one service, one RDP connection. So let's go ahead and get into it. Here you can see I have two ZD Desktop Edge for Windows. This one here is running on the computer I'm recording this video on. And this one over here runs in my house, but you can see it's in an RDP window. And so we're going to emulate this exact situation. And in order to do that, we're going to use ZD Administration Console. So first thing you're going to have to do is you'll have to log in to your ZD Admin Console. And then you'll see the familiar dashboard. We're going to make a new identity. So I need to make an identity for my local computer, and we'll call this identity name local computer. And we don't need to select to create any attributes, but we could, you know, we could say this is the home a, a identity that is access to home or remote desk top able, whatever we want to add some identity attributes. We don't need these, but this is where you would add attributes. And then you'll leave the auth policy alone. In fact, you probably should just hide this auth policy and put it under the more options because it's not particularly interesting for many people. Uh, we can get into auth policies later, but that's all you have to do is just make an identity and click and click and save. And when you click save, it'll tell you your identity was successfully created. There's a little certificate icon and there's a little QR code. If I click the QR code and if I had a phone, you could scan this QR code and you can see it expires on 425, which is in approximately three hours from when I made this video. As soon as I make or download this JWT, as soon as I enroll it, this QR code will no, be, no longer be useful. So you can try it out, but it won't work. So I'm gonna have, go ahead and download my enrollment token. When I download that enrollment token, uh, you'll see, uh, let me bring up this screen now. You can see my uh, file explorer has popped up. So let's go ahead and put this local computer token uh, down in C colon backslash temp. And we'll save it there. And so now from this identity, my local computer identity, I'll click add identity, C colon backslash temp, local computer. And now I have a local computer identity. It has no services. That's cool. Let's go ahead and go back to Zach and let's make a new remote computer. And I'm gonna leave all this stuff just blank and click save. Now you'll notice since I've enrolled the local computer, the um, little certificate icon, the enrollment token has been consumed and so it's not shown anymore. I'm gonna download this enrollment token, put it, I'm gonna put this one on my desk, and then I'm gonna put it in temp. Same place, and then let's open temp. Uh, let me show you that screen too. I'm gonna go back to the right screen. There it is. And so I saved it into temp. Here's remote control, remote computer. I'm going to copy that, paste it onto this remote computer. Next, I'll come down here, add an identity, go to my desktop, find remote computer. And again, you'll see a service with, or sorry, an identity with no services. All right. Now we have to authorize both of these identities and we do that through the Zach. So let's bring up the Zach. And now if I refresh this page, you'll see this token has also been, this token has also been consumed. And so now here we are with two identities, both online. Um, and now we have to authorize them. So to authorize them, we're going to make that service. And all you need to do is create a simple service. This one will be uh, local to remote, remote RDP. I'm going to leave the attributes blank, but uh, when you learn more about OpenZD and when you start using attributes, these will become more obvious to you. Accessing the configuration, what identities can access this service. These are the ones that you want to be able to dial or connect to that remote computer. And so you can see, since I added these home and remote desktopable attributes, those are both here. I could use this, but I'm going to, I'm going to use the identity directly local computer how will the service be accessed and we'll say this is my my remote rdp also notice totally fictitious name 
RDP is not a valid top level domain. You can call it .zv if you want. You can call it .baloney if you want, whatever. I'm gonna just call it my remote RDP. And then the port 3389 is the default port that you need to use for remote desktop connection. And that's what you'll put under the accessing configuration. Under the hosting configuration, this is relevant to where the service offloads. So if we go back and look at the screens again, this is the computer that I want to be able to do RDP. And so on this computer is running an RDP server. And so what I really want is for the traffic to come from this computer. Oops, <laughs> I don't want to turn it off. I want to turn it back on. I want it to come from this computer. I was trying to drag it from this computer through OpenZD into this computer and then into the RDP service. So I want to offload the service to 127.0.0.1 or local host. Now, when you're creating your services, I do recommend you use 127.0.0.1 because local host can either be IPv6 or IPv4. And if you're not a professional at this, and even if you are, it's very easy to uh, create a service that doesn't actually work, even though it looks like it works when you use local host, because the service only listens on IPv4, but the offloading is being done onto IPv IPv6. It can be confusing. So use 127.0.0.1, port 3389. And now you need to know what service can host this service or what identities can host the service. Again, you see these before, but those are not what the ones we want. We want the remote computer to be able to host this service or bind that service. Now, the simple service that you see here, it goes through and creates policies for you. And when, when I click save, you'll see, boom, boom, it created some configurations. So you can go ahead and click on them and explore them. It created that service and it created two policies. And I'm done now. And so now I'm done with my ZD admin console. Let's go back to here and look at that. Now we have one service on the remote, on the remote computer and we have one service on the local computer. Now on my local machine here, I can read this. If you can't read this, I'm sorry, but it says my remote RDP 3389. So now let's go ahead and click the start button and type remote desktop application. And let's go to my, my remote RDP. And what should happen is this, this RDP session should get kicked off. Go ahead and connect, put in your credentials. And you'll see what will happen is that right there, you've been disconnected because another connection was made to this computer. If I bring this over to here, you'll see it is the same exact connection. I click the OK button and here I am with my RDP session, but this time through OpenZD and using a fictitious domain name called my dot r, uh, remote dot rdp and so there you go that's how you can rdp uh, through uh, the zd administration console let's log out through the zd administration console and i uh, hope that video helps you